Alright, float switch deployment. Essentially, when the water level of our water reservoir exceeds a certain point, then our setup here is going to turn off the power to our submersible pump, which supplies more water into our reservoir. Of course, we don't want water to be overflowing, and hence that's why we have this float switch setup. So, first explaining inputs into the system, we have 12 volts at these two places, and you can see that here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then though, and that power source comes into these two terminals right here. It's hard to get light in here. Uh -huh. So these two terminals, mm -hmm. and then one of these terminals co connects directly to this other terminal, which connects to the negative wire of the submersible pump. And then the other wire of the power source comes into this relay terminal, and then the other terminal, the relay, connects to the remaining wire of the submersible pump. So you need a closed circuit to make uh, power go to the submersible pump, and this relay, the electrically operated switch, is the only thing stopping that from happening. How it works is when you have this relay get a uh, trigger voltage of 3 to, 34, 30 to, 3 to 32 volts between here, supplied by the Arduino Uno microcontroller, then you get the connection between these two terminals, hence power going to the submersible pump. But when you don't have uh, this trigger voltage, then this turns off. So there's, a cl there's an open circuit, which means that these terminals are not connected anymore, and the circuit to the submersible pump is broken. So the microcontroller determines when the trigger voltage is applied and when it is not, and it reacts to the float switch. Right now we have the float switch which has two wires coming off of it on these two terminals, and the float switch is on its on position, which means that there is near zero resistance between these two wires, and the Arduino microcontroller senses that and supplies trigger voltage to the relay. Hence turning power onto the submersible pump. But now let's see what happens. Let's see our current setup at the float switch. Oh, actually, let's just get a reading here of the resistance float switch values so we can get a real sense of what we're dealing with. OK, so these are the float switch wires. And if, you, if we go to the resistance reading, then we take the measurement here, and then you'll see that it becomes near zero. Near zero. Caught that? And okay. we come back to this, add this back on. And as you can see right now, the Arduino microcontroller lost, is, lost its relay for on pin 13 because the resistance between these two terminals suddenly became near infinite when we disconnected the float switch wires. And now we're going to connect them back on, and you're going to see the LED come back on. And as you can see, it did turn, turn back on, and the uh, submersible pump has power once mm -hmm. again. Okay, let's go to the setup. So in this 55 gallon barrel, we have water, and when the water level exceeds this point, then the bobber is going to go up, and the float switch connection is going to break, which means that there's going to be near infinite resistance between these two wires, and we can dunk it right now in this prepared container of water to see uh, what would happen, mimicking the actual water level increasing above the bobber. And And you'll see that there's no LED on the microcontroller. And if we measure the voltage across the terminals here along the submersible pump, we will read low. But 
more importantly, once you get these two out, the float switch wires, and measure the resistance. There will be, as you can see, they will not go lower now. It's on the it's on the scale of millions of ohms, a lot of resistance, and the microcontroller senses that. Turning off the trigger voltage. That's pretty much it. Cool. Thanks, Yunsa. Mm-hmm.